Well, hello there, each and every one of you. This is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur, known as Wise Courtship, all over social media because of my book with a three-step system. It will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And so this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. And I'm so glad that you guys are with us today. And so as you come on, make sure you greet me. Make sure you greet me. Any of the information you want to know about me is at wisecourtship.com. And of course, my digital products are available for you too at bit.ly forward slash shop Tony. You have to put it into the browser exactly the way you see it. And when I talk about digital products, I'm talking about e-courses, e-books, as well as um, audio, audio uh, courses, audio uh, information, what have you. And also, um, we started a Create Your Own um, Streams of Income uh, course, and it's in part. So make sure you go to bit.ly forward slash create streams part one uh, to find out more about that as well. So um, I am also um, available um, on the radio, on podcasts um, at anchor.fm. And if you, um, wherever you listen to a podcast, most likely if you look up, <laughs> If you look up a Wise Courtship devotional, you'll hear this broadcast on that, as well as other Wise Courtship, um, the Wise Courtship Philosophy Show as well, as well as the Check In and Chat. We're on Spotify. We're on iTunes. We everywhere. OK. <laughs> and I'm talking now to give you a chance to get on, to share and all of that good stuff. Um, let's see. What else do I need to tell you? Um, I think that's it. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, our scripture is going to come from um, 2 Philippians 1 through 11. So make sure you get your Bibles, your iPads, your apparatuses, wherever you are um, getting the word. Make sure you get that. And I'm going to give you a little bit of time to get that together. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to do that. Um, and while you do that, I want to go ahead and type um, something in that I forgot to type in earlier. So go ahead and get that scripture together. Um, let me see. It was something I wanted to look up to. And we're a little late coming on today. We're a little late coming on today. We're on Periscope. Um, we're on Facebook Live. <clears throat> we are on uh, the podcast and we will be on YouTube in a few a little bit later today. You will be able to see that on YouTube as well. I was looking up something. What was I looking up? Ah, yes. There we go. That's what I wanted to type in. So let me go back to type in. Okay. Do you have the, uh, the scripture ready? And if you're watching me on a replay, can you give me a hashtag? Put the hashtag there. Hashtag replay baby. And let me know that you are watching me um, on the replay. Okay. So let's get started. Second uh, Philippians 2, second Philippians, Philippians 2, <laughs> 1 through 11. All right, let's read that together. And I'm reading the New International Version, okay? Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. 
in your relationship with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. We're in Philippians two, now we're on verse six. Who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Are y'all hearing this? Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wow, that's good right there. Somebody put in the chat box, that's good. Somebody put that's good. Sorry about that. All right, so let's see. Um, I want to focus on verse two. So let's go back to verse two here. Let's go back to verse two. And I see that some of you guys are watching. Make sure you greet me. Make sure you greet me. I see that you're watching. And, and some of that is because some of you guys are watching me via the web through Periscope. Some of you are also watching me via Twitter. So good to see you. Good to see you on today. Um, and just email me at info at wisecourtship.com and let me know that you watched me. Okay. So we're going to focus on uh, Philippians 2, 4, and that is not looking to our, your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Okay. Wow. That is wonderful. And we're talking today about humble support, humble support. Wow, you know, um, I'm an observer and a thinker, and I, I guess that's probably why um, I went into the field of counseling and education for a long time. Of course, you know, I have a long career of business ownership, as well as when I work with others, um, management and leadership. And I just noticed um, that there are really two types of people and many books have been written about this um about two different types of people and basically in a nutshell you have givers and you have takers make sure you greet me i'm gonna have to look on my because i'm not getting everybody's comments and i know you guys are here because i keep seeing the numbers the numbers are going up but i guess maybe some of you guys are not in a predicament to uh, to speak to me i'm not sure so make sure you say something to me if you can and make sure I got this on. Yeah, make sure you talk to me if you can. Um, so anyway, um, we have two types of people. You have the givers and the takers. And those who are givers, they understand that all of life is giving and receiving, giving and receiving, giving and receiving. And it really should be a flow. It should be a flow. Um, but what we find is that there are some people who either they will, if they do support you or help you, They'll tell everybody about it <laughs> or they will allow you to constantly support them, but they won't support you or they want to be undercover with the support. OK, <laughs> they won't support you. And I, and I don't understand that. I, and and I, I really tell you, I don't some stuff I don't understand. I may be compassionate about it. I may be loving about it. And I they appear to be understandable about it. But there's some things that I just really don't understand how. And, and I say this from a person who supports anybody who knows me, anybody who knows me, I know that I'm a supporter and I had to cut back on a lot of the support because you could constantly give support. You can constantly go to their event, their service, their this, their that. And you can hardly barely get them to come to anything you're doing. Okay. Ain't nobody helping me. Ain't nobody helping me. Who just came in? Good to see you. Good afternoon to you. That is uh, Misha. Hey, Misha. Um, I'm watching us from Periscope. Lakeisha, good to see you. Thank you so much for your support, darling. Greetings to you on today. Let me tell you something. Those of us who are great supporters, y'all can say amen to that. That's why Lakeisha is saying that is so true. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You constantly support. They expect you to be in the audience. They expect you to be in the service. They expect you to be everywhere. But when you turn around and you look for support, you can barely get the support. The ones who support you, the ones that do support you, they the same ones that support everybody else anyway. 
<laughs> they support us, okay? And we just have some people who are takers, constantly take, take, take. And even in this pandemic, in this situation that we're in today, it's all about giving and taking because it takes a lot. It takes, you have to be a giver to sit home and say, I'm going to shelter in place. I may not have it, but I may be a carrier of the coronavirus and I may infect somebody else. So I'm going to sit and stay in place. But when we just, I, I need this and I need that. Don't get me wrong. There's some real needs there, y'all. But a lot of times the people who are doing the most squawking got everything known to man. I just, I just got to get my, I just got to get my nails done. I just got to, as if you can't sit and do your own nails. Huh? You may surprise yourself by trying. Okay, 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 okay. But when it comes to supporting other people, when it comes to laying ourselves down on the line, when it comes down to, hey, I've got to, I got to give up something, that's when we have a problem. Is anybody going to help me today? Anybody going to help me? I can't see the reactions, but if you hit them real hard, if you tap the, the reactions real hard, I might just see them. Good to see you, Miss Adela. Good to see you. And so listen, we're on Philippians. Let me let me put that back. We read the entire. We actually read the entire uh, section, uh, Philippians two one through eleven. We read an entire section, but we're focusing on Philippians two four. Okay, and we're talking about humble support on today. And so, when you look at this scripture, when you look at this scripture, even though we're focusing on verse four, that says, "Not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others." We have to learn, this is what the scripture is telling us, not to do things out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. It says, rather in humility, that's verse three, in humility, value others above yourself. Oh my gosh. But this is what I like, Miss Adela. This is what I really like. When you get down to verse six, it talks about having the set. Well, verse five tells us to have the same mindset of Christ. And in verse six, it begins to tell us that who being in very nature, God, Jesus is God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Oh, gosh. See, some of us is we like, well, I'm God is I'm God's son. I'm God, so I am God, as a matter of fact. I'm God, so you just need to bow down. No, see, see, Jesus didn't come like that. Is this too plain? Somebody needs to share this. And I didn't say this earlier, but see that button right down there on Periscope, as well as on Facebook Live, you can touch right down there. Now, on Periscope, you can share with all your followers. You can tweet it out. You can put it on Facebook. Right here on, on Facebook Live, you can share on your timeline. You can invite individual people, and you can start a watch party. And I need for you to do that today. Because, see, some of us are sheltered in place right now, and the only thing we can think about, I know it's not y'all. That's why I asked y'all to share. That's why I asked you to share, because it's not y'all. But I know that what we do a lot of times is we, we think about ourselves. And we don't think about other people. And here we have Jesus, who is God, the second personality of God. And it says here in verse 6, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God. He didn't say, hey, I'm God. I'm equal to God. I'm on God's level. So y'all bow down to me. But instead, <clears throat> he didn't use that to his own advantage. Rather, verse seven, he made himself nothing Woo. by taking the very nature of a servant. Somebody put nothing in the chat box. Good to see you, Angela. Good to see you. Somebody put nothing in the chat box. He made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant. Oh, my gosh. Now, nobody's saying that you got to be walked on. Nobody's saying you got to be uh, mistreated. And nobody, nobody's saying you need to be crucified. But it does say in the scripture that we will pick up our cross daily and follow God. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Dell said Jesus himself tells us. He came to serve and not be served, and we should do the same. We are being, uh, we are being selfish, selfishness. Oh my God! 
That's why Jesus came to serve, not to be served. And so we as believers shouldn't be always concerned about what we're going to get out of the deal. What, what our needs be met. Don't get me wrong. You should have shelter. You should have food. You should have clothes. I don't even believe you should give everything away. and You have nothing for yourself. You don't provide for your children. You don't gave every, I don't, I gave to the poor and I gave to the homeless and your children home starving. That's, that's just not wisdom. Okay. But at the same token, we many of us who sit here and complain, and many of us who are sitting, we're, we're sitting with every amenity, every amenity we could ever think of, and we're the first ones to complain. I'm not talking about y'all. That's why I asked you to share. Go ahead and push down right there and share this broadcast so that someone will be blessed by this. Because you know, to be that selfish and to be that uh, non-supportive. It's not, we talked about peace in a crisis. Remember that? We talked about being thankful in a crisis, faith in a crisis. We talked about all of that. It's hard to have those things when you're selfish. Oh my goodness. When we're not humbly supporting. And we cannot, as I explained early on, that we have givers and takers in the world. And we cannot be on the taker side. Don't get me wrong, because it is reciprocal. Sometimes you need to receive. But it's, the Bible said it's more blessed to give than receive. I taught that one time, and, and a Christian who knows the word well didn't even know that was in the Bible. It's in the Bible. And, and, and that's no shade, because we all don't know everything that's in the Bible, child. That's why we need one another. <laughs> that's why we need one another. But it's more blessed to give than to receive. But it does not mean that you will never receive. But takers are people who are constantly, constantly, constantly taking. And it never dawns on them to turn around and support somebody else. Oh, my goodness. Once again, dear ones, I try not to teach the, I mean, I teach the truth no matter what. OK, no matter what, the truth is still the truth, whether you doing it or not doing it, it's still the truth. But I love teaching stuff I know and I have put into practice and I am a supporter. Anybody who knows me knows I'm a supporter. Anybody who's on the church with me knows I be at every service. I'm supporting people. I'm there. I'm at funerals and I don't even know you. OK, I'm supporting. I'm there because you somebody I know I'm supporting them or I'm, I'm there because you are a member of the church. And I had to slack back on a whole bunch of stuff because, you know, the calendar just fills, fills, fills. But I do that because of love. And when you have the love of Christ in you, there are certain things you're just going to do. Oh, my goodness. Let's get back into this. Girl. Let's get back. I'm not really getting no help right here. I really need to see some amens or some thank you, Jesus, or something up here. Because, listen, the truth will make us free. And if Jesus can do it, if he can consider, if he can make himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness, if he could step down out of royalty. Hey, Frazier, good to see you. If he could step down out of royalty and make himself a servant to serve us, then we can do these old little things by supporting somebody when they need support, by bringing by some food, by slipping some money in somebody's hand, for, by praying for them, by, they, by being sheltered in place when we're asked to do so. Oh, my goodness. Y'all not going to listen to me. Y'all not going to listen to me today. Let me just tell you, let me just tell you. Oh, well, let me let me just go further about what he's done. Verse eight and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death of the cross. We're not even asked to we're not even asked to do that. We're not even asked to do that. We're not even asked to do that. The death of the cross and all we're not we don't even have to, the same mantle. We don't have to even carry that mantle. So if Jesus can do that, we can do what we've been asked to do. Oh, my gosh. And if you go back to earlier, what we read, because verse four is really what I'm focusing on. But if you go back to earlier to what I was saying, what I read, verse uh, Philippians 2, 1. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion verse two, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one spirit and of one mind. Ooh. Sounds like to me that it's not just about you talking. It's about action. 
Oh boy. You know, that's why, that's why I'm being honest, Angela. I'm being real honest. Just, you know, I guess I don't know. See, let me look at y'all faces. See, some of y'all real young. Y'all don't look like y'all over 21. But when you done live for a while, you like, you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> I'm a supporter. And I, I cheer people on. I encourage folk and all of that. But you know what? And I still will do it to a certain extent. But I, I'm not going to be raking myself over the coal. And folk don't. They just want to take. They don't want to. They don't want to reciprocate. We got to do better. I'm talking about. I'm talking about Christians on certain. I'm not talking about people who don't know Christ. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about all of us who say we fire baptized. We speak it in tongues. We on the higher level. We in another dimension. We we preaching and teaching the word and all of this kind of stuff. And if we not we not um if we not give us, I really don't want to hear anything you got to say. And I'm not I'm not trying to be ugly, y'all. I'm really not. I'm not I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just I'm trying to glean up on the folk who not perfect, but who at least have the love of Christ. Oh my God. Am I wrong? Somebody help me. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Somebody help me on today. If I'm wrong, y'all pray for me, honey. Y'all pray for me. Because see, I expect sinners to sin. I expect that. And I expect babes in Christ to be babes in Christ. But I do not expect folks who, who teaching and preaching and who doing all this. And secretly, you want me to you want me to uh to 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 uh crash and burn. Oh gosh. We talking about humble support. I don't understand folk who have the love of Christ and they don't want you to be successful. Hmm. When I go do these wise courtship workshops, when I'm teaching about relationships, one of the things I always say is I want you to win. Oh my gosh. I don't have a problem with you being happy. I don't have a problem with you being successful. And I'm not going to sit there and watch and watch you stumble and fumble and fool around when I know I got some information that I can help support you and uplift you. If I got an encouraging word, if I got a donation, I can slip in your pocket. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Is anybody getting anything out of this today? See, that's why I asked y'all to share, because y'all doing this already. Good to see you, Terrell. Oh, my goodness. Don't sound like love to me, not when someone behaves like that. But yet, you know, we and you're right. You're right. And and so y'all been around, y'all know that we we will put we will pretend. Good to see you, Pam Pam. Oh my goodness, good to see you. We will pretend. We will throw we will throw around these words. I just love everybody. Oh my gosh. You don't know everybody. <laughs> and I don't want to hear what you I just love everybody. I want to see you love everybody. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Y'all help me today. Oh, Frazier, you done said it now. Too many takers in life. Uh, Tony Henderson Maris has been seen many Christians who just take and expect folk to do their work for them until they end up alone as folk have realized and left them. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. If you want to be successful in any type of relationship, there's giving and there's taking. There's reciprocation. There's never just take, take, take. It's always about me. And I always use this example. You got 200 pairs of shoes in your closet. When is it going to dawn on you to buy a pair for somebody else? Well, you know, I'm going to give this these pairs right here. And they got holes and they raggedy and you tired of them. They out of style. So now I'm, I'm ready to give those. Am I too practical? <laughs> I mean, you know, I could just quote all kinds of scriptures, honey, and we can go deep and we can we can figure out what, what the mark of the beast is. And we, we might can put on a mathematical scale uh, the representation of the of the of the six candles and and, and, the, tw and the 12 lampstands. And we can go through all of that. We can figure out revelations from beginning to end. But it doesn't make a hill of beans if you don't have love. Huh? That came right out of, uh, of Corinthians 13. Is that not right? That you can do all of these things. You can have your body to be burned and all of that. But if it's not done with love, it means nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> y'all share this because y'all don't need this. Somebody else needs this. Oh, my gosh. 
And that's why we, you know what, Pam, that's why we need the word of God, because the word of God lets us know in Corinthians 13 what love really is. Because in this day and age of alternative facts, no telling what somebody will say love is. Oh, my. Oh, my. They'll have you doing all kinds of stuff in the name of love. Mm -hmm. But in the Bible, it tells us exactly what love is. And if you don't have that heart for other people and you just doing it just to be seen and just to be congratulated, y'all know how people do. That's not love. Look at verse nine. Because Jesus was able to do this, because he was able to go to the cross, because he was able to, to humble himself, even though he was royalty, he humbled himself like a servant. Look at verse nine. It says, therefore, God exalted him. Somebody put exalted in the chat box, exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Oh, my gosh. Look what happens here in verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, somebody put Jesus in the chat box. Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and underneath the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. You know what this tells me? Ain't no celebration. There's no accolades. There's no awards. There's no trophies, baby. Not really until you do the work, until you learn how to humbly support. Oh, gosh. That's right. We got to be reminded, Miss Adela, every day to give, to give to others to support one another. I've said to somebody else, because I remember they were leading one time. I had a client that were leading and they wanted to know why they couldn't get nobody to do this and they couldn't get nobody to do that. I said, because everything is about you. Don't take my coaching sessions, honey, because I'm going to tell you the truth. Because <laughs> everything's about you. You have not focused on the people that you're supposed to be serving, first of all. That's first of all. Remember that? First of all. <laughs> And secondly, if you help people do enough people do what they need to do that God has given them to do, you'll have people to help you do what you need to do. Now, um, Angela's very, very familiar with Mother McLeod. I love that woman. God knows I love that woman. She's gone on with, to be with the Lord. And she always said to me, she just don't know why so many people love on her and do for her. I said, that's because you did for them. You served them. You honored them. It's nothing wrong, guys, with honoring other people. Oh, gosh, I just said something. I just felt something like boomerang. Did y'all feel that? <laughs> it's nothing wrong with honoring other people. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to take from you. You know, we worry if we're going to take our people and people are going to take our clients. And if I honor them, they're going to they're going to elevate before me. There's nothing wrong with honoring other people. Oh. Give honor to whom honor is due. And when you do that, when you honor them, when you allow them to serve, when you allow them to be all that God has called them to be, when you humbly support them, whew, they will turn around and they will bless you. They will honor you. Oh, God. I wish somebody helped me on today. <laughs> I wish somebody helped me. Oh, my gosh. Pam said, we are servants. Yes, indeed. We are servants. And I believe there's a scripture. I know it's a scripture that says if you want to be great in God's kingdom, you must first be the servant of all. Oh, my gosh. I learned that in vacation Bible school. Remember that? It was a little song. You want to be great in God's kingdom. Learn to be the servant of all. That's why it's important you teach your children the word. That's why it's important you teach in the vacation Bible school. Because if you teach them young, they will have less problems with this of humbling yourself. See, you, some of us are struggling in our businesses because we won't humble ourselves. We won't allow people to come in and help us. We, some of us are having problems because we won't humble ourselves and sit down and be taught. Like I tell sometimes in, in the wise courtship workshops, you will have good relationships if you humble yourself under someone who had a successful relationship. Humble yourself and be taught. Oh, my gosh. This is what we're talking about, being a humble servant. 
It's not about your acting. Yes, degrees are nice. They're important. I got a whole lot of them. I got a whole lot of them. I can make a necklace out of them. But you don't hear me talking about, I'm, I got this degree and y'all y'all need to listen to me. And, you know, because we get a little degree behind our name, we go crazy. Huh? I'm not talking about y'all. That's why y'all need to share. Go ahead and share the broadcast, okay? Go ahead and share. I'm not even talking to you because y'all nice people. Go ahead and share the broadcast. Reap what you sow can be good. That's right. It doesn't have to have a negative connotation, right? Reaping is still reaping. So if you reap love, you're going to receive love. Oh, my gosh. If you reap support, you're going to get resource. If you have good ground. Because somebody may be listening to me today and they may say, you know what, Tony, I've done that support thing. I was with you in the beginning of this broadcast when you were saying, when you saying you support everybody and, and sometimes they don't want to support. I was with you. But then when you tell me something I need to support, I don't know, because I've been supporting people and they don't support me. Well, you you sowing in the wrong ground. Bloop. Somebody put bloop in the chat box. Bloop. <laughs> You saw it in the wrong ground, honey. Just like we think that that parable just mean money. The sowing and reaping parable. Oh, that's just for money, right? No, it's not just for money. That's for anything. That's for everything. Whatever you sow into, you can expect to get a harvest. And some of us are supporting takers. Oh, my goodness. I can't even get off this lesson right now. I should be praying right now. I can't even get off this lesson. Some of us are supporting takers. Oh, boy. What do you mean, Tony? All they do is take, take, take. No matter what we give them, they just take. There's never a there's never an even exchange. And don't get me wrong when I say even exchange, sometimes even in a marriage, sometimes it's 80, 20. People be saying it's 50, 50. That's not quite true. Sometimes it's 80, 20. Sometimes it's 30, 70. Sometimes it's 50, 50. Sometimes it's 100 and zero because things happen in life. And as long as it fluctuates, it keeps moving. We OK as long as it's fluid. But when it's always um, zero and 100, somebody say that's not going to work. Oh, my goodness. Somebody say that's not going to work because that's one sided. But when we are planting in a ground where, where it is a, a, um, a taker, you're not going to get the harvest that you're looking for. You got to have good ground. Somebody say good. Y'all go back and read the parable, parable and stop just thinking about money. When you read the parable. It could be about money. It could be about love. It could be about friendliness. It could be about support. It could be about anything. It could be about work ethic. It's still the same principle. The principle works no matter where you work it. Oh my gosh. The, the principle is going to work no matter where you work it. God's principle is working everything, y'all. In everything. And so you may be watching and saying, I've been supporting and I've been supporting and I keep supporting these people and they don't support me. They probably bad ground. Some people you just help because at the time they cannot help themselves. They're not going to be able to give you anything in return because we're not doing it just for a return, y'all. That's not what we're just doing it for. We're doing it because we have the love of God in us. But at the same time, we have to be wise. If you constantly giving to somebody and they tape it, taking it, some of them people even raping you, just take it, raping your talents, raping, raping your abilities, raping your patience. Oh, gosh. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Let's go back to the scripture for a minute. We're talking about humble um, support. We go back to our key verse which is, let me put it up on here, our key verse that we've been focusing on. Philippians 2, 4. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. When you sincerely look to help people and you want people to win and whatever it is God has for them to do, and that's, that's really the key there. It's not just some willy-nilly support. I'm going to help support you. And you know, every bit of money you give into them, they're doing some drug deal or some, some craziness. Why are you supporting that? Huh? 
Sometimes we do that. We support. We just keep running with the person who's doing the wrong thing. And then we got a child over here trying to struggle through school. We got people in our own church trying to struggle through school. And we won't even give anything to that. But that old drug dealing son or nephew or cousin, June bug and them, we keep sliding money over there instead of sliding some money over to some folk who's trying to do the right thing. Oh, gosh. Y'all help me. Help me, Lakeisha. I'm about to end this, y'all. I'm going to have to end this. But this word here says, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. When you see someone trying to do what is right, when you see somebody trying to get up off of their feet, when you see somebody who's having a hard time, or you see somebody who's successful, they're doing really well, but you can come alongside them and encourage them. You can do something to empower them, to help them. Don't see it as a competition. It's not a competition, y'all, especially when, we in, when we're doing things for the kingdom. It's not a competition. We all may be on a different playing field. We may be on the same playing field, but we should be supporting one another in everything that God has for us to do. Well, darlings, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to pray. I pray that you got something out of that. Yeah. You know, the, I just, the Lord just give it to me and I just start flying with it. So y'all pray my strength in the Lord. <laughs> so we're going to pray. And when I put these uh, glasses on, y'all, I want you to go ahead and put your prayer request up through the chat box and I'm going to pray for you. And if you're watching me on the replay, um, I will pray for you. So go ahead and put your prayer request in the comment section. Okay. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Come on, let's just worship him. Do you mind doing that? Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you. God, we lift you up. We magnify you. God, we just thank you. And we honor you and we bless you. First of all, God, we ask that you forgive us for all of our sins. Forgive us if we have not supported, if we have not humbly supported God, if we've been haughty with our support, if we've been telling everybody that we supported someone or forgive us if we have been too jealous to, to support someone or to undergird someone, if we have not um, uh, done the things that you've asked us to do, especially when you told us to support or to encourage or to empower. God, forgive us. God, we thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you, oh God, that we are in our right minds. God, we just bless you on today and we love you. Somebody celebrate God in this chat box. God, we just honor you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for food, clothing, and shelter. We thank you that we are in our right mind, that we know where we are in this present time and in this present space. God, we thank you for protecting us from this coronavirus, even as we're sheltered in place. We thank you, oh God, uh, for those of us who may have been sick and you've restored us. God, thank you. God, we pray for those who are still bereaving as we have lost loved ones, oh God. We pray for the Smith family and so many others, oh God, uh, the Yule family, oh God. Um, and, and you could put some of those families up through the chat box. God, we pray for those families who lost loved ones to the coronavirus and through, through death through, during this time. And it's been very difficult uh, for us to support and be there at funerals and at the family's homes. Oh, God, we pray for them. God, we pray for those who are struggling right now with sickness and illness and disease. God, you said by your stripes that they are healed. And so by Jesus stripes, God, we pray healing over them right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, that every, every lung, every organ, every, um, every, every cell, oh God, will um, operate in the way that you have asked it to operate, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray, oh God, for finances all over the world as people may be suffering, oh God, because they're not working, they don't have income, what have you, oh God. We pray that every need, you said by every need, um, that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory in God. So we claim that and we receive that, that you will supply all of our needs, that we will not lack. You told us not to worry about what we will eat or drink or wear. So God, we turn that over to you because you said that you would supply our needs. God, we just um, thank you for being so good to us, being so kind to us. Go ahead and put your prayer requests up. God, we thank you for 
uh, touching um, our loved ones, oh God, and providing for them, even though we may not be able to connect with them. God, we thank you for this medium called Facebook. We thank you for Zoom. We thank you for Periscope. We thank you for YouTube. We thank you for all the podcasts. We thank you for all of the wise courtship listeners um, who are listening on radio, on podcasts, all those who are watching on live stream television, those who come out on the conferences, those in the private communities, and those who read the book. God, we pray that they will be blessed every time they pick up any wise courtship information and that it will change their family tree because they will get in line with your principles, God, in accordance to relationships. God, we just magnify you. Yes, indeed. Um, we pray, oh God, for Adela's um, family. We pray for the Silva family, for restoration, oh God, for her siblings, and her son, oh God, touch them right now. We know that you are in the restoration business. And so we touch and agree right now. Everyone who's listening to this broadcast, everyone who's joining us live, we touch and agree right now for restoration in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and put your prayer requests up at this time. God, we just bless you. We honor you. We pray for every mother on this broadcast, every father on this broadcast, oh God, give them the stamina and the strength for those who are still teaching their children at home. Touch them right now, God, with extra energy, innovative ideas, patience, oh God. Help them to come together like never before. Tighten those family relationships, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for every business. We pray for witty inventions and ideas. We pray for increase. Oh God, in this child, this time during the coronavirus, we pray for increase, oh God, that the businesses will soar uh, beyond all that we could ever ask or think. God, we pray for uh, Judy's outlook. Open her mind. Open her because our, our, we know that our thoughts are not your thoughts, oh God. Our ways are not your ways. And oh God, help her, help her to submit to your wisdom and to your way, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for um, every, um, good to see you, Miss Andrea, good to see you. God, we pray for patience over every parent, oh God, as they teach their children, oh God. And I pray, I pray as they teach their children, as they teach their children, that it will be revealed to them this week, God, in the name of Jesus. Somebody touch and agree with me. I pray that it will be revealed this week, the path that they should be pushing their children in, the path that children should be going in, that so that the children will be motivated, oh God. Y'all touch and agree right now. I pray that every child will be motivated to learn, that they will be um, willing. I pray that their bonds will be made like never before in the name of Jesus. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I pray for, let's see who else is on there. I pray for every church. Every church who is trying to get the word out, I pray for every pastor. Y'all pray for these pastors. Some may be discouraged right now. Some may be tired. Some may be wearied uh, uh, right now. Some may not know how to get, keep their, their congregations together and, and to keep everybody uh, uh, learning and, and all of that, oh God. But let us encourage them, empower them, God. We pray peace over them. We pray empowerment over them and innovative ideas over them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I say, I pray for uh, every woman, every woman, oh God, I pray that you uh, that they would know that you are that they are your queens, oh God, that you have um, wonderfully and miraculously made them, oh God, and that they will never settle, and that they will never feel like they're second class in any way. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every king on this broadcast, every man, every man, that the pressures will be released over them. That any pressures, the pressures of life, the pressures of providing, the pressures of, of relationship, the pressures of children, the pressures of everything, um, that it will be released right now, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. And now, God, for anyone who felt like their prayer request was too private to share, possibly too personal to put on this in this comment section, God, we pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. Every broken heart, every broken spirit, every broken situation, we pray restoration and healing in the name of Jesus. Knowing that any answer you give us, any answer will be better 
than anything we've ever expected. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I forgot to put up there that I was praying, y'all, because, you know, I know y'all come on and be like, hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Tony. <laughs> And I'll be like, I'm praying, I'm praying. So let me just give you a little bit of encouragement. I want to give you a little bit of encouragement. Um, I know that there are some challenges for some people who are watching. Um, and some of you can't come into the broadcast. And some of y'all just, y'all just watching on the sidelines. Y'all know how y'all do, especially on Periscope. But I love you. <laughs> I love you. And so I know sometimes it can be difficult. Um, some people are struggling in their finances. Some people, um, they just cabin fever. And, you know, it's funny with us. We're all on different levels. Some people are hollering and screaming because they locked inside while the people who are in jail looking at you like, really? Really, boo. <laughs> well, we just pray for you. We pray for you, okay? <laughs> Some people are hollering and screaming, but you got all the food you need. You got everything. Yes, yes, indeed. We definitely will touch and agree. That's right. Yes, indeed. We touch and agree, Miss Adela. We touch and agree. And for those who are listening to us on our radio or a podcast, she's praying for our middle, children, middle school children and high school children to be encouraged to get on internet and do those assignments and off games and television. And, you know, I just want to encourage every parent. If you're a parent, give me a, give me a hand emoji or say parent, type it in the, in the comment section, especially if you are working with children right now. I want to encourage you. Um, when I was a little, little thing, about five years old, my father was a pastor and he would see me teaching my dolls. I would line up my dolls and I would be teaching. At that time, I thought we were teaching. Now we know that I probably was prophesying and, and, and um, and encouraging exhortation. <laughs> That's probably what I was doing. But in your way, uh, they saw from what they knew or their reference, but they saw a calling very early on. You don't see that if you don't watch your children. What are you talking about, Miss Tony? I see my children every day. I see my grandchildren every day. I said, no, you can see them and not watch them. Okay. You can see them. Oh, they there. But until you really look at their faces, until you really watch what they do on a regular basis, what they gravitate toward, because children, the Bible tells us they're like arrows and you can draw them back and hit toward a target. And if you get them young, okay, if I got to use a degree and being that my parents worked real hard and then when my father died, I worked hard for this degree, I guess I'll use a little bit of it, okay? There's, if there's a theorist called, his name is John Locke, and he said that children are like blank slates tabula rosa. I agree that there, you can put so much on that blank slate. Don't waste that opportunity. Somebody put in the chat box, don't waste it. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. See, the thing is, you may be struggling now, but if you work with them kids, you may not be struggling later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Work with your children. Educate them to the highest. Don't push them in stuff that they can't. They 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 really don't feel called to do. We do need to get our basic education, and I don't I don't think that uh, uh, you ought to come in with raggedy grades. But some kids are not going to be straight A students. They're going to be C and B students. But when you see D's and F's, it's unacceptable. Some kids are going to be straight A's, and when you see a, a B come in, you look at them like really. You have people work to their potential. Everybody has their own, they have their own uh, um, um, gifts and their own proclivities. I bet you if I was to go down this chat box right now and say, uh, how many people good at algebra? Some people would be like, are you crazy? And some people are like, oh yeah, I got that. How many of y'all will do public speaking? I don't have a problem with public speaking. Never did have a problem with public speaking. But some people, they'll literally throw up. If you make them do it, it's like they saw a snake. And so you've got to watch your children and you've got to pray and say, God, reveal to me what they need to be doing and help them to get this basic education and to do well in that and begin to steer your children where they need to go. But here's the most important. Somebody put the most important and I've got to get out of here. Here's the most important thing. Teach your children about God. Don't just bring them to church. Teach them. Oh, gosh. I am who I am because my parents taught me. They didn't just send me to school and that's a, those are babysitters. 
I know I got some teachers on here going to say amen because I'm an ex-teacher and a prof ex-professor. And sometimes I'm still a professor. I still be teaching y'all. Hold on. <laughs> Don't just send them. This ain't no babysitting service. Work with your children. Those your babies. Oh, my gosh. Why can't I get off of this right now? These are your children. And each one of them are kings and queens. And they can be the best or the worst. When I see people calling their children all kind of names and cursing them out and don't realize you got a gym right there. If you work with them, if you mold them, if you teach them and if you don't teach anything else, you may say, well, I'm struggling teaching them algebra. That's OK. You get somebody who's going to help them with the algebra. But if nothing else, honey, you teach them about God. You teach them about the power of God, because what I've learned is if you learn how to learn, if you learn about God and you learn how to be obedient to his word, a lot of this stuff that people's doing and they running around like chickens with their head cut off. And I'm looking like, OK, you know, I feel I feel for you. I have sympathy and empathy and all that, whatever. But I'm not running around like a chicken with my head cut off because I know the father. Oh, God. You know, some people are about to kill themselves. You know that if we if we stay in place a little longer, some folks gonna jump. I never forget. I was um, in a city called Newark, New Jersey. I had just came back over from New York, and I was walking down the street, and there was a crowd pointing, looking up, and there was a gentleman about to jump off the building because he lost his job. And somebody said, "Well, he made eighty thousand a year, and because he lost his job, he about to jump off the building." When you have Christ in your life, you can make it, you can sustain, you can get through it. And even though we're going through some stuff right now, when you have Christ in your life, you will learn how to humbly support others. The focus now is not on you, it's on supporting somebody else. And the first place we can start supporting is we can start supporting by teaching our children, by working with our children. That's right, teachers are not the parents. The parents are the teacher. Did you know that? That the first teacher the child ever has is the parent. Don't waste it. Somebody put that up there through the chat box again. Don't waste it because we talk about sowing and reaping and it's not just about money. Whatever you sow into those children, that's what you can expect to reap. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that's what you can expect to reap. I expect a harvest. When my children got those full scholars, that's not because, oh, it, they just got picked out the bucket. No, you got to work for that. And sometimes you work for it and you still don't get it. But you know how to work around. You got enough in you to take you where you need to go. Good to see you, Seema. Good to see you. Don't waste it. These babies are important. And I know, I know it can be trying, but I've done it before. I don't teach you nothing I, don't, I haven't done before. When people weren't even thinking about working from home, I was working from home and having little children all around me working on, I think my second master's degree, they were little. When I worked on my third one, they was up a little bit more. And I was homeschooling and working with them and all of that. But that's our job. You can do it. Somebody put you can do it. You wouldn't be in this position if you couldn't do it. You may not think much of yourself, but God thinks a whole lot of you. And what he puts in you will work if you work it. Well, I got to go. <laughs> I got to go, y'all. This, this one right here, I'm telling you, I pray that y'all got something out of it. I love each and every one of you. And remember that you can visit me on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm on social media just about everywhere. As Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayors, all you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, that's right. We got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Mm -hmm.